In this video, I'd like to look at the question, what was the impact of the white settlers on the California and Oregon trails? And I'm sure that many of you have seen images like this of wagons heading west, because this is one of those defining images of America, of wagons moving across the plains, over the Rocky Mountains and over into California and Oregon. And it's really the impact of those that I'd like to look at in this video. Now, the white settlers, when they were moving west, took many different routes. And this map shows you most of those routes. But I'd really like to focus on the most famous of those, which is the Oregon-California Trail. And you can see the Oregon Trail starting here in the north. And it's that north red line, and then that splits with one half of the trail heading towards California and Sacramento, and the other half heading towards Oregon. Now, <coughs> The most famous of all of these, as I said, was the Oregon and California trails. And this journey, which normally began from one of the towns on the Missouri River, which you can see marked here, was normally it started in a place called St. Joseph or Independence, which is on this map. Now, that journey was a 2000 mile journey and it took eight months. So imagine that, being in that wagon for eight months, covering 2,000 miles just under the power of a horse. Now it was in these Midwest towns like Independence and St. Joe that the settlers really began their journey. And in these towns, they built wagons and they stocked up on goods that they would need to last them over the next eight months. They set forth in spring mostly, and often they traveled in trains, wagon trains of about 20 or so wagons, because they realized that the more people together was actually they'd have much more of a success at the end because they were in a bigger group. And you can see that picture of what this would have looked like. Here there are only four wagons. You can imagine what that would have looked like with 20 or so. And those covered wagons initially followed the River Platte, which you can see on the map here. And that river went across the Plains region that we saw in the last video, which was where the Lakota Nation and many other nations of Native Americans were. And when they were covering the Plains, they would cover probably about 18 miles or less per day. And the wagons would stop at forts along the way, like Fort Laramie, which you can notice here where they would buy and collect more stocks. The next part of their journey was probably the most difficult though, because out of the plains, they then had to cross the Rocky Mountains. And the Rocky Mountains are massive throughout this region. And you can imagine how difficult that is trying to get over a mountain pass with a horse-drawn buggy. There were frequent accidents and some of them even got caught in the autumn snows. For those people that were traveling onto California, the journey didn't get any easier as that trail crossed over desert and even more mountains. So whichever route you took or whichever route the white settlers took, there were really three major issues that they had to face all along the way. Hunger, disease and conflict. And all white settlers pretty much follow, had to face one of those three issues. So that to me naturally raises the question of why would they want to do it? Why did they want to put themselves in danger and make this journey across? Well, there are five big reasons. Firstly, in 1837, there was a massive economic crisis. And in the East, banks collapsed and many people lost their savings. Wages were cut and people lost their jobs. And as a result of that, people started looking towards the West as a place where they could start a new life. Secondly, word spread. And word spread of the success of those early migrants, and in particular, how easy it was to farm in places like California and Oregon. And as a result, adverts in newspapers spread throughout the United States, telling everyone how brilliant it was to move over into the West. Thirdly, Government legislation or government law helped them. So in 1841, there was something called the Preemption Act that was passed. And that meant that any farmer who moved out to Oregon and built a house and cleared trees could buy and had the right to buy their surrounding land. This meant it was easy for those people to get land. Fourth, we've come across this before in a previous video. 
there was an idea of manifest destiny and that idea began to spread quite heavily. Journalists and politicians believed it was God's plan that the United States should spread from sea to sight shining sea, which is a phrase that's often used in America. Now, we now know that this kind of idea is actually a racist ideology because this does not take into account at all the fact that the land was already inhabited by indigenous people like the Lakota who we looked at in the last video. So there's this strange idea that white people have a right to settle North America, despite the fact that there were already people there. Lastly, mountain men have mapped that 2000 mile route and made it as safe as possible. So those people who we looked at in the first unit, like Lewis and Clark, who'd already been out and traveled some of these routes, meant that actually these routes were well known really by the 1840s, 1850s. So these five ideas are really pushing white settlers to move west. And it's interesting that you can see that here that some of those are economic reasons, some of those are political reasons, and some of those are racist reasons. And it's for a combination of those reasons that white settlers move west. Now, really, this video started out with the question, though, what was the impact? What was the impact of the settlers of the California and Oregon trails? And really, their impact was... Uh, two major places. Firstly, there was a major impact in terms of conflict with the Native Americans of the Plains. We looked at those last lesson. And secondly, there was conflict with the Native Americans of Oregon. Because unsurprisingly, these white settlers trying to move into the land that was already inhabited by the indigenous people, this unsurprisingly led to huge conflict with those indigenous people. Let's start with the Plains. And in the Plains, I wanted to start off by looking at this quote from Senator Douglas of Illinois. And he said the following. How are we to develop and protect our immense possessions on the Pacific coast with a vast wilderness filled with hostile savages cutting off all direct communication? The Indian barrier must be removed. And you can see the venom in some of the words that this man is using. Words like savage and Indian barrier must be removed. These people wanted to remove the Native Americans from this land. And it's in this period, 1840 to 1860, that they begin to do that. So in terms of what happened with the Indians of the plain, um, lots of what happened happened at those forts that were along the route. And this painting is of Fort Laramie, which is probably the most famous of those forts. And at forts like Fort Laramie, treaties were made, formal agreements between the US government and the Native Americans, where the Native Americans were essentially forced to give up their land and they got some things in return, but not enough for giving up their own land. And the Lakota in particular agreed to a treaty at Fort Laramie. And this is that painting is depicting this with the Lakota in the foreground of Fort Laramie in the background. And they agreed that forts could be produced along the Oregon and California Trail. And the Lakota would allow the safe passage of settlers along that route in return for hunting grounds to the south. So the Lakota agreed that they would let people build forts and let people move along those trails in return for bigger hunting grounds south of the trail. But the problem with that is that that hugely angered other tribes because as we discovered in the last video, there were nations all the way along, all the way along these plains and other smaller nations like the Crow believed that the Lakota were getting a far better treatment. And as a result, that led to conflict between those Native American nations. Very similar things happened in Oregon as well and happened with the indigenous people of Oregon. And in Oregon, similar treaties were made with the Yakima Nation and the Yakima Nation as the nation of Native Americans who were in this region, in this Oregon territory. And the Yakima are pretty much again forced to cede, which means give up, uh, land for settlement. And in that treaty of 1855, which did the Yakima sign, no settlers were supposed to settle in the Oregon Territory for two years after the, after the treaty was signed. 
That didn't happen because 12 days later, settlers began moving in. So the treaty was really just there to really, in essence, shut the Yukima up. Understandably, that hugely angered that nation of people. And the Yukima nation take out their anger on white settlements. And as a result of that, the army are called in. And as a result of that, this leads to a two-year war with the US government fighting the Yukima nation. That war ends up with 90% of the Yukima nation land being taken and 24 of their chiefs being killed. So if we're going to sum up what was the impact of the white settlers on the California Trail, it's the limiting of Native American land and it's violence towards Native American people. This is building up to a far greater conflict that will happen in the really into the 1860s and 1870s. And it's that that we will return to in the third unit.